Hello and welcome. You're tuned to The Leg Up, your weekly thoroughbred preview podcast. And I'm joined by the usual suspects in studio, Paul Moati and Stephen Hunt. Good morning, Paul. Pink shirt on. What's, it, what's happened here? I must have missed the memo here, haven't I? Well, it, it is anti-bullying day, so no surprises <laughs> you don't have a pink shirt. <laughs> Suggesting there might be a bit of workplace bullying going on between you and I. I'm not going to say any more at this stage. I'll say no more. It's a people thing, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll leave it. We'll leave it in house. Uh, your bit of the day last week was a winner. Hey, never in doubt. What was the horse again? Pisco Sour. Oh yes, that's right. Never, never in doubt. doubt. <laughs> never in doubt. <laughs> Alan, well done to you getting your uh, bit of the week home. Morning, Stephen. How are you? You good? That is. Had good, a good, good week. Yeah, very good week. Yep. Uh, no meeting today, but we've had a couple of meetings on Wednesday and Thursday. Synthetic on both Rickett and yeah. in Cambridge, kicking off uh, this year at yep. the Cambridge meeting. So. Uh, we better get used to it. There's plenty in store for the next few months. Yeah, so we're going to be seeing that all those Wednesdays and Thursdays will Every be... Every fortnight, I believe, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, and your bit of the day last week, a winner. Yeah, who was it? Remind me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Think about it. We'll come back to you. Uh, now, man, well, you might have a pink shirt on up there in Hamilton. Uh, we can say good morning. Of course he has. Say good morning to Brendan Popwell. Oh, you've come to the party big time, BP. How are you? Pretty good, thanks. Yes, uh, i tell you what, I... I copped a bit of stick for wearing this top uh, a couple of months ago, including one GW Simon, uh, <laughs> maybe considering that I've jumped ship, but everyone has a second team, George, and I explained that over the phone uh, to you, you as have well. To the Warriors. Uh, so, <laughs> but yes, a few others are also wanting an explanation, so uh, there you go. I was a Penrith Panther fan when the Winfield Cup was on uh, through those 90s periods, so I was able to stick with them, and of course, uh, what a win it was by them against the Melbourne Storm. Um, as opposed to best bets, uh, it was lovely to hear you run through the team there uh, and, and talk about the, the uh, certain victories. Um, mm. it, it was death by a thousand paper cuts for mine because it was there to be won. It was winning pep talk. Oh. And then somehow right on the line, Al Hal Mary has bobbed it right on the line. It looked home everywhere, didn't it? <laughs> it so took over on the point of the bend, cut clear, even gave it a little yes. Yes, Katie, uh, at about 100 out, and uh, no, not to be, but oh well, that's the game. Oh, we're about to go three for three here. I, I had you home on Pep Talk, absolutely home. I'd called it, the boys are going to go the clean sweep for the week, but uh, yeah, Alan Sherrick had other ideas. Uh, pink Shirt Day, BP, uh, it's Pink Shirt Day at your son's school today as well. What's that all innate of? It's bullying, isn't it, this year? That, that's right, anti-bullying, and yep. um, certainly all the schools get behind it, workplaces too as well so um, you know great initiative uh, by everyone uh, and uh, yeah so uh, everyone's out in there with their pink shirts on so um, my son uh, Braxton he's actually wearing the exact same shirt except with the Ivan Cleary uh, number uh, no sorry Ivan Cleary Nathan? here we go Nathan Cleary uh, <laughs> on the back. <laughs> I'm Ivan's vintage uh, he's Nathan's vintage uh, so um, yeah we he's a bit of a Panthers fan as well yeah, OK. Well, we'll stay with you, BP. Uh, well, let's touch on your maiden of the week. Who'd you find this week for us? Look, I went to the race meeting at Mudder Mudder uh, last week. There was some really good races there, and I think it's a race meeting we can keep coming back to uh, with a number of good maiden performances there. I've identified the one that was won for Moona Alam and Frank Ritchie. Uh, look, they went very quick early in this race, and that was the quickest out of all races of the first 400 metres. And Gwen's daughter was able to just to take a spot in behind that speed. I'm pretty keen to be on Alpino next time and the second horse in this race also with just how they've run. But this horse out of a very good race mirror in Gwen's Rules. Now she was a runner. Yeah. You know, she was a horse that raced in all of our good races uh, as a sprinting type Gwen's Rules. And this one here in Gwen's Daughter just took a nice position with that good speed up front. Alpino looked good on the point of the bend but this horse was presented between runners and got the job done. As I said, Prismatic is a horse that shouldn't be too far away from getting the job done. I'd be keen to backing Alpina with the way, the way that horse is running that race too. So, yeah, I think that will be a good form reference. Yeah, 100%. Queen's Rules, uh, the dam, uh, she wore the same colours, I think, BP, and she mm. ran in railways and uh, yep. all our top sprints, didn't she, from memory? Yep, she did. She did. She was yeah. she was a black type performer. Uh, was was Green's Rules a, a, a winner herself? So yeah, great mm. to see her progeny out on out on the on the track. And that horse, look, look, was presented at a big price off the back of a trial victory. Uh, mm. Got the sweet run and and got the job done there. But yeah, I think it's a meeting overall. I think you can pick the eyes out of a, a, quite a few races there and, and maybe find some potential winners over the next few weeks. Yeah, it was a good meeting, Steve. Any thoughts around uh, Green's daughter? Do you have any any numbers for us or? Overall rating, 1.4 lengths below pass, and a real knock there. Uh, when it comes to breaking the race in two, so the first 600 
V, the second or the last 600, equal to standard to the 600, 34.52, was over two seconds faster than the last 600. So BP's nailed it. They've gone out very hard in terms of splitting the two races mm -hmm. or the two halves. the two, two halves slash, uh, slash sectional. So, yeah, with uh, looking on uh, on face value, Alpino, who who led up uh, and only gave in in the last 150, is definitely a, a horse that will be winning in the short term. So, okay. um, yeah, Gwen's Rule, second to our Egyptian reign in the... Railway uh, back in 2003. And then our Egyptian rain go to Hong Kong, perform well? Aussie. Aussie. Yeah. Aussie, sorry. I think it was yeah, Egyptian yeah, yeah. rain here and then no, known right. as our, our Egyptian rain over in Australia. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, very Speaking good. Speaking of Australia. Yes. Kiwis. There are a few Kiwis over there. Yeah, Sullivan Scott team, they'll be fairly happy. Yeah, yeah, it was a big win from Duck Destroyer, wasn't what? it? Yeah. Why didn't I back it? <laughs> wet track. Put the wet there. track. You put all your money up on pep talk. There was a huge run last time and I couldn't find it. Yeah, what yeah, 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 I've lost it on pep 290 right. Cinerama BP, did you see that coming? Considering how the track played, because the yeah. one negative going into the day was barrier one if they were going to come right to the outer part of the track, but track played fairly fair in the yeah. first five races leading in, and she eased out to 2.9. Oh, I don't think anybody saw that coming, really, let's be honest. Yeah. The money was strong for leaderboard, wasn't it? That was one of the pushes in the race, and I think Rising Storm, again, on that sort of middle line was where the money support was. Uh, but uh, the way that she a uh, jumped, got away, she was always going to be able to use her barrier draw. If she could get away, she did. She got three back defence. She fell asleep. There was pressure put into the race uh, down the back straight uh, by Marietta Lane, who's fought on and, and fought on gamely in the race and went up alongside Big Mike. So it just meant that the pace was there for the horse to be able to get out the right time. Hmm. And, and she just proved her, her, her best. She was the class act of the race. She had the weight relief on some of her big chances in front of her. Uh, and she went straight past them. But, yeah, $2.90, nobody saw that coming. I thought Francesca, too, with how she won. Mm. Uh, she was another horse who was able to, uh, to plant herself uh, up on tempo. Again, she was a drifter, too. There was early support, and then she, she got stone cold in that last two minutes of, of betting, uh, did Francesca. So, yeah, big afternoon for Matt Cameron. Great to see him mm. uh, pick up those stakes victories. Uh, and what a way to sign off for, for Cinerama as well, with what a career it's been for her. Group one placed. A terrific uh, stakes mare, uh, and then takes out the Rotorua Cup in her final race. Yeah, hundred percent. Gee, it must be tempted. Song. Must be tempted just well, to so go I'm one more campaign with Cinerama. I know they I'm want to go into the yeah. breeding paddock, yeah. but a lot of mares race and foal for the first three or four months yeah. into the new season. So, I mean, the ideal prep, if they want to put her in foal, that's the most important thing. Get her mm. in foal first, but so she they can, can get her in work. Maybe, maybe the Livermore right? because yeah, she's yet okay. to win a Group One, but Alan knows what he's doing there, and okay. they may not just look to. Uh, roll that dice, yeah. but um, Francesca was good though. Resuming, yeah, the defy the drifters. Jeez. BP alluded yeah. nine dollars, I think, closing yeah, yeah. price fixed odds. Uh, a nice little thirty minutes there for Andrew Forsman. Had his mm. debutante winner down in Harwood in terms of a, a solo trainer, and then thirty minutes later took mm. out the feature race at Rotorua. So it'll be hard to beat wherever she goes, Francesca. Yeah, it was a great training feat because yeah. she hadn't raced since the October uh, month of last year. Yeah, off a bleeding attack. Yeah. To do that and so dominant, yeah. um, the money was there. Even though it defied the drift, it still accounted for roughly 35% of the hold. So the money was there. The stable knew they had a bang on for mm. the first up assignment. And she was just a little bit soft purely maybe to the overall profile that we hadn't seen her for so long. But, yep. yeah, great training feat. OK, team, we better get into it. We've babbled on long enough. We want to touch on four races, and hopefully we'll get to the jumps features as well if we do have time. So we better tuck in. Tidapa race three is the first one we want to have a look at, Steve. The Direct Fats and Oils Limited. 1,400 metres. Headed by Swiss Kitty, best back in this race, and one of the better backed in the race card at Tarapa, Swiss Kitty. Open 420, now trading 360. Bigger single bet, 1,200 at $4 yesterday afternoon. In front of Dawn Parade, out of turn, 6 to 650. So wicked. Intriguing runner, first up for Andrew Forsman and Kelsey Hannon. $8 hasn't budged since the opening call. Only in America, 750 out of turn at 8. Masangi Lass at $9. Double figures around Silverdale Chief at 10. Flavius, 13 out of point. Rekindled Express, 13, and The Twinkling, also first start for the Richie Murray lineup, 13 out a couple of turns to 15, best of the rest is Hudama at 16. So, um, look, quite a compressed competitive market if you want to shop outside the favourite, but that is clearly the best lead for Craig Grills and Robbie Patterson, who's flying at the min 420 into 360. Yeah, no doubt Robbie Patterson's having a great time, and good luck to Coventina Bay in the Doombin Cup on Saturday. BP, Swiss Kitty, that money's strong, and no one missed that first up run, did they? They didn't. Look, he, he is a horse that seems to uh, get a fair bit of attention, though, doesn't he? And this is not the first time that you've seen a money move for Swiss Kitty, and it won't be the last. And look, we had Robbie Patterson on uh, trackside on Tuesday, and he spoke highly about this horse's chances in Dame Vera. I think it is the other horse that runs on Sunday. 
uh, at Harwood that, that he was expecting though to be winners. Now he's he's training winners on both sides of the Tasman at the moment. Of course, Mary Louise, the good winner here uh, on on the weekend out of Harwood, and of course, Nom de Plume winning on Wednesday mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, synthetic to get that horse possibly as a backdoor entry into a Queensland Oak. So things are ticking over well for the stable, uh, and. Look, he has been a heartbreaker. As I said, he's, he's won two from ten, but there's been other times where the expectation has been there. But the way that he ran last time, and he is a horse who's won second up on heavy ground. Uh, and that is a point to make here. We, we have our first weekend across both venues where our tracks are wet. Now, currently, uh, Tadapa sits at a heavy eight. We have had um, morning thunderstorms and a lot of heavy rain this morning. Uh, but as we all know, this is a track that can dry out, and it, look, it has been bone dry across the region uh, so if there is to be that uh, expectation of maybe no more rain it could come back and it's a very quick drying track but I certainly would be working on that seven to eight bracket at least anyway with the amount of rain we've had uh, in the last sort of 24 to 48 hours at least anyway yeah. so I am going to look towards a, a wet galloper here that can be a chance and, and maybe wants it wetter but Bully Brook number four now he is a runner that excels from this time of the year through to about September, uh, and right in the heart of it, through that July-August period is where he runs well. He's performed here at this venue last season by winning two races in the 65 and 74 grade. Both of them were over 1,400 metres, and both of them were on heavy 10 surfaces. So he's just a runner to keep a watch on in terms of where things happen with rain. If it does keep raining and it gets wetter, he gets down to 55 and a half kilos. He is a dangerous wet track prospect in the race, I thought, in Bullybrook number four. Yeah, OK. It was interesting bully, that Bullybrook came up. It came up in the meeting, too, I can tell you, the pricing meeting. It mentioned it for similar reasons that you uh, raised it there, Paul. Um, what were your initial thoughts here? What were you looking at? Uh, I did mind the look of So Wicked. She's back from Sydney, where she mm. had a wee bit of success. Mm. Uh, she's been ready for this with a couple of trolls, the most recent uh, of which she uh, won very, very easily. Um, she gets a four kilo claim, so down to 56. Uh, if she's ready, I'm very, yeah. very happy to take the, uh, what, around the $8 mark. So, yeah. I'm she was a good performer in Oz, wasn't she? She was. really. She, she won some races. She picked she? up a few wins there. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Eight bucks. Is this just a little nibble for it, too, just to get you in just a little bit more warm? Just a little nibble early, I yeah. see. Yeah, like a warm bowl of noodles. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah, okay. So uh, Swiss Kitty Steve, favourite, well backed. Uh, but there's a number of chances here, isn't there? Quite a tricky one to price up outside the fave, I would have thought. Yeah, I think finding the fave was easy enough, but it's a very compressed market, as I mentioned before. If you want to shop outside the favourite, I, I, I like Flavius. I had a lot of time for this horse last prep. Forget it went round first up. Its first up record is fair. But the key around this individual, it loves left-handed slash tarapa. And you go back to last season, it did beat Swiss Kitty in this grade, trip and course back in October. So I think that's a big improver. You're going to mm. get a price. It's going to hold up to that double figure line, Flavius, with Jonathan Riddell. It's got a sticky gate from Barrier 9, but I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if that really improved from its first up run, which you, you wouldn't have on paper. But as I mentioned, left-handed bucket to Darpa and the form links that you can surround that horse and who mm. it bet last season is right up to winning the 74 grade. Okay. Uh, back on Swiss Kitty, BP, Look, it showed tactical speed last season to put itself in the race in a few in a few occasions. Look, it went back from a wide gate, went to that neutral position first up over 1,200, back to seven furlongs. What do they do from that sticky gate for Craig Grills? Mm. Because there is a little bit of speed. The likes of Rekindled Express, Masangi Lass, Butterfield, or even Max first up can go forward. So do they chance their arm and go forward and hopefully get a spot in the first four or five, or do you think they ride them in a similar fashion to first up in that neutral position? Yeah, maybe like they did first time to the race of seven. And, and, and look, the horse was was so good through the line. And there have been times where the horse has been nailed late and finished into the placing. So maybe that is his real go in life to be the one that's closing in races. And, and, and the barrier draw looks like it might dictate that again here on the weekend. So look, with track conditions, and look, we had a meeting here a couple of weeks ago and with the, the likelihood of the track chipping out and things like that, that look, getting back and look, working home down the centre part of the track may not be too much of a bad place to be as well uh, out of Tadapa. So, look, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. If they look to try and ride the horse neutral and, and come over the top of the game, like they did last time, look, there's no reason why he can't put in a performance second up. I, I think it is a race where if you don't like Swiss Kitty or, or of the belief that, um, you know, there, there might be some vulnerability there from his barrier draw, look, you can go searching around for so wicked with the horses form in, in, in Australia and a few other options too. Look, Dawn Parade is a horse that... Um, 
uh, has cost me plenty. He, he's just become a bit of a money muncher, hasn't he, Dawn Parade? Uh, and I, I would probably need a little bit more than $6 uh, to, to have a bet on Dawn Parade. But Gee, he was heavily punted last start, BP. He was. You see the SP there, I think it was yeah. roughly three fifty four dollars what it doesn't show there on the paper form is it was around about seven dollars five minutes out from the race and then right. got backed into about three fifty from memory brennan yeah look he's just one of those horses he, he look he's a very talented horse he, he does everything right in the stable and and leading up to, to races and and when he has won he's looked very good hasn't he in, in the times that he's won those four races uh dawn parade so we're, we're maybe just waiting for a little switch to be flicked there and, and, and he can get the job done but he sits around that six dollar price but yeah i think if you wanted to shop away from swiss kitty it is a race where you can have the ability to maybe look towards uh some, some, some something in the middle market or a top three or a top four chance as well yeah okay so you're thinking bully brock might be that horse bp yeah i think so yeah yeah I, i've probably got swiss kitty as my top selection in the race and you know want to have it in quaddies and what have you but just want to be mindful of Bully Brook and probably watch the weather and how the how the pattern is and how that track might be playing after the first couple of races. Who else you got on your cheat sheet, Paul? What else do we need to touch on here? Well, Swiss Kitty, obviously. Yeah. Um, but you know, I can't take my eyes off so wicked. I, re I, I just yeah. love the price. Yep. Um, and with Kelsey Hannon on board, getting the four kilos, I just think it, it, it's really it's a lovely each way go to start the day off um, early yeah. on in race three so so wicked okay and only in america i see you've, you've got a little bit of time for there as well we haven't touched on only in america yeah up in grade but it was a uh, super run uh when winning last time i think it was a uh, rating 65 so yeah i'm very very keen very mm -hmm. very keen okay so so wicked for you maybe the little saver on only in america Indeed. Last thought, Steve. Boxing yeah, look, Swiss Kitty is my number one selection, yeah. but yeah. I do like Flavius and Only in America. They're the two that I would definitely be including in exotic bet types, maybe the early quaddy. Only in America needs to improve two lengths, but look, she's only lightly raced, has had the five race starts, and I think Sam Spratt from that sticky gate will ride in that neutral position will look to blend into the race at about the 400 metre mark, but Only in America yeah. and Flavius are the two that I don't mind in that middle market. He doesn't mind your Only in America. That's, an, that's good. That's very good. Okay, I'll well, take that. We'll okay. handle heavy track conditions, so like mm -hmm. most will in that field, but yeah. it's a big tip. Okay, so maybe a little bit of value uh, in race number three on the card. Uh, if you can afford to shop outside the favourite there in Swiss Kitty, the boys liking Bully Brook, only in America, uh, and so wicked maybe on a bit of an each way basis, Andrew Forsman, going very well uh, as we saw last weekend. Guys, race number four on the card, the champion freight three-year-old over the 1,100 metres, and yeah, a relatively dominant favourite here, Steve. It is Thaddeus, but they're really keen on the second fave as well. Turn the ace first up at a $5 price. Opening quote five fifty for Turn the Ace for Alan Nicholas and Andrew Forsman. We will rock, as you mentioned, clearly the best bat runner though. 270 into 240 was what we call smart money in the first 24 hours to get its price in from a 270 quote to 240. Turn the Ace I've already touched on. Wind speed, something had to give. 550 out to 6.5. Yeah. Laneway flirting the stable made a wind speed at 7.5. Just in a turn there. Yeah. Masangi Lass probably opting for the 74 grade race with no jock here. Uh, $9 price currently. Mm. Eridor, 14 out of turn to 15. Best of the rest is Lingjin Hero, 16. Soft now trading at 21. So best lead, we will rock at 240, mm. but turn the ace, plenty of admirers slash punters investing on the first up runner. Yeah, okay, no doubt they uh, saw the trial of turn the ace BP, but we will rock certainly comes through a race that's um, you know a very, very strong form race indeed and, and looks a good bet here. Well, he does. I mean, he bounces out of the, the Cambridge Breeders. We've already had the chance to be able to reference that race with how Synchronise went uh, and then came out and won a, a nice race last weekend out of uh, Rotorua. Uh, and, and just how he's run this season. I mean, it's it, all, uh, the other race was the El Manzor, uh, where he was able to finish into third position, of course, on, on Karaka Million Night and behind uh, Sword of State. So, look, he is a runner that has run terrific races this season. He doesn't mind the cut out of the track. Uh, a couple of races where he's performed from wide barrier draws. Remember that day he won at Topor uh, in his maiden race. He was a horse that you know, had to overcome a wide barrier draw. There was cut in the track conditions and he, he just raced away from them uh, and produced the right figures in that particular maiden victory. And he just looks to be a horse that is well above average. Now on that race meeting at Tadapa in the Cambridge Breeders, we'll have a look at it for you because he's done some work in the run here uh, in this particular race because he's drawn 14 of 14 and here he is sitting outside leader. Outside of him uh, is the eventual winner of course in Bonnie Lass. He finishes in a third position beaten in length and a half. Look Bonnie Lass 
look, really, she is a horse that has the likelihood of going to that Group 1 level again uh, next season. She's already been a performer at that grade. Uh, and look, this is a super strong race. And Stephen, you've broken the numbers down for us. Talk us through the figures around the Cambridge Breeders. Yeah, so the overall time, Brendan, 70.23 to the 600. Now these sectionals are based on open class figures, just fractioning below par to open class figures, minus 0.4 lengths. The last 600, almost identical, uh, minus 0.3 lengths, so slightly below to what you expect to open class conditions. The overall race is rated minus 0.7 lengths below par. Um, what you do see there um, is that they've gone even clip uh, to the last 600 uh, and to the 600. So <clears throat> what I'm saying is that also what isn't shown there is the advantageous slash bias to DARPA did play on that day. So mm. they've gone hard, but the likes of Synchronise, who's bounced out of that race, has been a sub winner. Sassy Merlot, who we all know missed the start in the Breeders, but ran home really strongly, mathematically had no chance of winning the race. But mm. also those horses that fit, well, well, basically were situated midfield or worse, really didn't have any chance, not purely on those figures that we see there on the bottom left-hand corner, but also added that the track was playing on speed that day. And we did see Sassy Merlot being sub-placed against Older Mears at group level last weekend at Rotorua. So, mm -hmm. um, look, the race has gone really well overall. Yeah. They've run at even tempo, so naturally you'd say, right, it does favour all runners, yep. depending where they're situated. But I think what it didn't show there is looking at the overall card and how the race has panned out, there was definitely a bias to be on speed. Yeah, OK. And so those horses that were making ground or getting home from the back, uh, uh, probably not, not say as bad as they looked, but they're probably more advantageous runs than they may appear. Absolutely, and we've seen that in the last seven days. The likes of Synchronise and Sassy Merlot, they've come out and franked that form, even finishing worse in midfield in the Breeders. So mm. um, it's not to be so much negative around the boss, Bonnie Lass and the We Will Rocks, because no. in particular, like Bonnie Lass had to cover ground, was sitting three, four wide, facing the breeze, and We Will Rock had to do some initial work from a wide gate and the run even clip for the first 600. So mm. um, I think it's just uh, seeing all the variables come up together and knowing the fact that Tadapa was playing bias, mm. that naturally you would have thought crunching those numbers on face value that the back markers had their chance because they've gone even tempo to the 600. But mm. I think adding the bias really had a telling factor. It does look like a strong form race for this Sounds fall. Like there's a number of black bookers to come out of the breeders. Well, we missed one, didn't we, and synchronised. Well, BP didn't, but... It's already come out and won and got heavily, heavily punted. Who, who did you have on your sheet here? Who should we be looking at, Paul? Very hard to look past We Will Rock. Um, first of all, after what uh, Steve and, and BP have just uh, gone through uh, out of that breeders, and of course, uh, the Al Manzor, where he ran in behind Sword Estate and Imperatures. So yep. um, that, all, that, all, that form just franks really, really well. So I can understand why the money's come 270 into 240, mm. and I've also. I really, really do like the look of We Will Rock. Yeah, just give me yeah, exactly. We race up on the speed as well. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, having a look at the Stephen Marsh stable mates, mm. uh, wind speed and laneway flirting, who had a bit of a battle down here, uh, down the straight at Tarapa two weeks ago. Yep. Um, and I see there's a bit of early money for laneway flirting, which sort of yes. that pushes me towards. Uh, laneway flirting as opposed to wind speed so yeah we will rock on top but yeah um, certainly laneway flirting somewhere in there as well it's interesting to see that money with the stable mates though isn't it as it, it is yeah okay so they've made a little bit of a call potentially early that laneway flirting maybe a slightly better chance than wind speed pop surmise the race how are you going to attack uh, race number four a nice race it is uh, and we see a good draw for we will rock we'll have to carry the 58 and a half with turn the ace with weight relief, it's won a trial by a big margin oh. at Avondale. Just giving that suggestion that he's ready to go uh, here on, on the weekend uh, with uh, Alan Nicholas aboard. So he's a runner that's won at this venue. Of course, he's won a stakes race here as uh, a, a late two-year-old last season uh, has turned the ace. And we haven't seen him since his summer preparation. His last run was in uh, the Karaka Midian Classic, for instance, where uh, he was uh, able to be just a couple of runners home. So he's had a good break. Uh, he gets a little bit of forgiveness in the ground, which he's, he's been able to deal with, and weight relief. So he becomes a dangerous prospect, mm -hmm. and you'd imagine that they'll be looking to push forward with him uh, over 1,100 metres. So I think he's the biggest danger in the race too, We Will Rock, but I'll mark with the form that we've seen this season from We Will Rock, which is very strong, uh, and uh, Jonathan Riddell staying with the horse in front of uh, Turn the Ace. And yeah, away from that, I, I found it hard to try and work out the rest. Uh, 
in, in terms of some of these other runners, the, the, the Marsh pair obviously uh, right in the marketplace too. But yeah, after the top two, I, I mm. sort of almost could have just thrown the balls up in the air there and um, yeah, come up with different combinations. Uh, so yeah, I'm liking the one three. We will rock on top and turn the ace uh, to play a big part as well. And we don't have that footage, unfortunately, but that trial of turn the aces wasn't uh, too shabby. Yeah, yeah. As I said, <laughs> it, it, it looks ready to go, doesn't it? So, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, be very mindful, and it sounds like you've you've taken some support as well. Yeah, we have. We have taken a little bit of support, Steve. No problem, surprise with the horse of that calibre, but and the trial, obviously, but has come in a turn, and there is money there. Yeah, look, and he's got great form at Tarapa this time last year. He went back to back, winning a stakes two year old race. Didn't really come up in the spring slash Christmas time term, the ace. He did run fifth in a Sartan at Tarapa. Um, he maybe just needed a bit more time. Uh, he was a late blooming two year old. That maybe was a telling factor that he didn't come up in the spring. I, I'm not sure. Just going back on his trial, very good on the eye. You look mm. back, there was 16 1,000 metre heats that day at Avondale. It was the quickest. Slightly misleading. I don't want to put a total knock on it, but mm. he was heat five. The majority of the 1,000 metre heats that day were at the back end of the day, and it was an off track. So, But still, mm. on face value, is the quickest time out of 16 heats over 1,000. Hasn't had a lot of luck, though, since he was a two-year-old, to be fair. No, he came, sort of burst on the scene, didn't he? And yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, and just hasn't had much luck. No, but off of that trial. Yeah, exactly. Well, what did you, what did you land? Where did you land in the end in this race? Oh, uh, we will rock on top. And yeah, uh, beat, no. just with the money coming for laneway flute and early on, I'll have a little each way. I like how well. you've dissected those marsh pair for us because it does look like laneway f flirting uh, is the selection from the stable, even though uh, we have wind speed ahead of it in this market. Okay, guys, we're going to have a look at another race here, race number six on the card, as I turn to it, of course. It's the PGG Rights and Grain 1300, Steve, for the open handicappers. How's this market look? Again, a well back uh, favourite, a mega bourbon. Uh, we've had a key scratching yesterday and crystallised. It was around that second, third line from memory. Uh, has come out. So mega bourbon opened initially four dollars, three fifty prior to the scratching and crystallised. Post that scratching, it's been driven into three dollars flat. Mega bourbon, clearly the best lead and best back runner in terms of dollars invested. In front of tight line, six dollars. Helena Baby, second best back runner, sits in the third line at six point five. He's the one for us, seven fifty first up. Thunder double figures ten. Master Park eleven dollars. Germanicus Jusui Tiger twelve dollars each of two. Mr. Universe sixteen best of the rest is the Ralph Pier and Manrico New York Jazz eighteen dollars the duo. So look, Mega Bourbon best bat runner, Thaddeus, mm. Helena Baby, second best bat runner of a after a flashing light first up run. Yeah, no, it did look like it's back, Helena Baby, which would be great to see BP. Mega Bourbon three dollars, tight lines flying. Uh, you know, and then you've got some good solid performers like he's the one for us and Thunder BP. It's not the easiest sort of race to break down here. No, it's not. And uh, I, I was really taken by Helena Baby actually. Um, and, and a race where Tavia won it, uh, and Tavia looks to be a, a nice type to, to watch out for uh, into the following season. Look, look, let's go back and have a look at this race because you've got a great chance to uh, block out Tavia, but also look at the other major contenders. Uh, for this race. So you've got at, right at the back of the field there, you've got Master Park who was slow away. I thought it was going to be a speed influence in the race. It ended up back last. Helena Baby's back there with it. Now Mega Bourbon takes the lead here on the point of the bend and is run down by uh, the eventual winner uh, in Tavia who just got into a sweet spot in the race. Look, the thing that will help a, a couple of other runners here and especially Helena Baby is just that chance of maybe a little bit more forgiveness in the ground. We know he's a Group 1 performer. He's had to travel the globe uh, in the last couple of years, of course, with his recent racing in Hong Kong. But he's come back and he's put a, a good run on the board there to say that, you know, maybe his old form's not too far away. And you've only got to go back at some of his heavy track performances uh, when he was here in New Zealand in a race that obviously stands out for me and, and probably one of the with the calls that I like to go back and listen to. I, always, I love finding old race calls uh, to go back and just watch because it's just a get that, you know, that little buzzy feeling. Bruce Sherwin's call uh, with Helena Baby when it won the Open Aki Cup is, is an absolute beauty. Uh, so uh, Helena Baby was in terrific form there, was racking up the wins and looking forward to seeing this horse on, a, on another track condition that will have a little bit more juice out of it. So uh, I think he's a chance in the race. Mm. But Mega Bourbon with how he was run down there and how the horse has been running of late has to be a major player. So I think that's the right video to try and help mm. us out maybe find the winner. There wouldn't be too many people spend their Friday nights watching old race replays, but we can relate, Pops. Don't you worry. We can relate to you. Uh, break down the numbers, Steve, because that was a good run on the eye from uh, Mega Bourbon, our favourite. Yeah, look, they've gone on, on the eye. You knew they went quick. Um, mm. Probably not as quick as 
and first uh, and or well, anticipated they've gone 1.2 lengths above par to the 600 uh, so they've gone fairly quick and um, they've come home a fraction slower uh, in the last 600 but overall the race rated well I thought Mega Bourbon was in the perfect scenario just off that hot tempo and that slipstream uh, running third taking a trail um, look he got beaten by a goodie I think that's all you've got to take note there's mm-hmm. no to veer on Saturday to contend with and I'm not surprised he's been back Mega Bourbon um, I think that is the key form race as Beefy's alluded yep. Mega Bourbon Helena Baby I wouldn't be surprised if Helena Baby closes second fave in fact I'm very confident it will start second fave uh, currently trading at 650 so maybe that's an okay price at present around Helena Baby no knock on tight line what she's doing or what he's doing at late is, is very very strong but um, just the overall profile, Lena Baby, and particularly coming out of that mega bourbon race, will frank that horse to be second fave on the day. I thought it might need 1400, Helena Baby. I know it's up and tripped slightly, 12 mm. to 13, but negated by the off track. I think that's the key. If it was 13 on a dead, or should I say soft four or five, thank you. Then I would have been a little bit more negative, but if we're looking at that pentrometer reading possibly being seven or eight later in the day, yep. I think that's negated the fact that it's 13, a little bit short of its best. I think 14, 1600, this preparation might be a sweet spot. Okay. But uh, yeah, Mega Bourbon, Helena Baby, look the two standouts for me. And when you say above the race rated above par, that's basically an average of all the 1200 meter races at Tirapa. Correct. Basically. At Tirapa, yeah. Okay, so it's yep. rated above par, so it's performed better than the average. That's yes, what we're saying for open viewers. class conditions, yeah. Okay, excellent. Paul? Um, talk us through what you're thinking here in race number six, the PGG oh, Wrightson. I do like the look of Helena Baby uh, oh, as well. He, PP lining up again. Yeah, well, he, uh, he he was winning them for fun. Um, well, four or five in a row before he hit it over to Honkers. Mm. Um, and it resumed with that, as we just saw, with a gutsy placing here, recording the fastest last 600 and 400 splits. Yeah. So it, it does look like he's ready to go again. Uh, yeah, I also like the look at uh, tight line. Um, can't knock it, can you? No, you can't. And Crystal Lindsay seems to have a wee bit of an affinity with the horse. Um, gets the claim as well. Uh, got a wide gate, so I don't know. But are they going to go forward as they usually oh, do? 100%. 100%. Um, yep. So if she can slot, get across without having to do too much, um, I'll, I'll give Tightline a big, big chance. So, yep. yeah. But it's hard to go past Mega Burn. That was a great battle with Tavir mm. uh, at the Rapa down the straight last time out. So, yeah. Only just only just uh, taken late there was um, the favourite Mega Bourbon. Before we go back to BP Steed, uh, he's the one for us. Quite short in this market, I thought, 7.5. And Master Park's another one you might want to touch on quickly. Well, he's the one for us. Ran a nice trial and behind Crystallise. And Crystallise was well respected in the market initially before it was removed. Just want to see a little bit more money. I'd rather open those particular horses on the high side, let the money dictate to where it finds itself on race day. So... Mm. I can probably see double figures around he's the one for us at a $7.50 quote. I personally priced it at double figures, number nine. So SP. that might be the... SP if you like it, very good. Yeah. Um, and I do I do like, it's an interesting runner master part because initially going into that first up performance at Tarapa, and BP would be a, in a grand here that we thought it would go forward and possibly mm. lead in the Tavir race. They elected to go back from a wide gate and it finished home as... You alluded the fastest 6 4 in that particular race was Helena Baby. Well, the mm. fastest last 200 in the Tavia race was Master Park coming mm. back from last in a and getting a couple of late splits in the race. So there's no jock here, so maybe they're looking at scratching the individual. I'm just taking a guess there. BP might know a little bit more information around Master Park, but I think if it's ridden in a more positive fashion, which we've seen its best race starts to date, it's not without a show going on its mm. last start performance. Yeah, yeah, it's run the race. I, I, I'm not too sure if it was by design. I think it was just maybe slow away uh, in, in that race. Now, it's drawn one, uh, as you said, no, no jockey yet. So, uh, look, we, we are unsure uh, if the horse is running. But you'd imagine the stable mate goes forward, of course, in tight line, who's drawn in barrier number 10. Uh, so that horse goes forward from a wide barrier draw. And if he jumps and puts himself in the race, well, surely uh, we see this horse sitting in behind uh, the stable mate in Master Park. I, uh, in behind tight line. So these two horses from the Marsh Stable, you know, ideally can be in the right spot, but I think he might be as well. I, I really think he's a great top four bet if he is sitting in behind speed, which should be a nice strong one set up by tight line. If it is a strong tempo, I think it will also help Helena Baby and Mega Bourbon to show their best at the end of this race also. 
Uh, I'm going to go with Helena Baby just just with where he sits at the moment at six dollars and fifty cents. Yep, big first up run and maybe uh, the the the. the the obvious second up syndrome uh, with, with a horse who we haven't seen for quite some time is a question mark and for sure I think it is a red flag for this runner here. I'm just relying on what we've seen in a previous preparation here with him getting on a track condition that he's, he is looking for uh, just to maybe help him out with a good bit of pressure up front. So uh, I, I was sort of split between Helena Baby and, and Mega Bourbon uh, as my main chances in this one. Okay. Fixed Cornella maybe, fixed Exactus, that's what we might be looking at. What about Germanicus BP before we... Go to Paul. Um, we track. Yeah. 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 I, I think the track condition is, is a bit of an mm -hmm. issue there if it, if it starts pushing into that heavy bracket uh, for, for Germanicus. Um, look, certainly loves going this way of going, uh, mm -hmm. but I just wonder once it starts working away from sort of about a soft, soft six, uh, soft seven, when it starts working away from that, that is when it becomes a bit problematic for Germanicus. Okay. Paul, what do you got? What do you got? Well, you landed with Pops, haven't you? Well, I'm. I'm looking at the market uh, well, at around just after 10.30 on Friday morning and I can see the best backed in terms of individual bets is Helena Baby at $6.50. So uh, there's certainly a lot of support out there for uh, the big boy Helena Baby. Um, yeah. It'd be nice to see him back, wouldn't it? It would. Yeah. It would, yeah. 6 dollars will won't hold up. So if you're watching this live and you do like Helena Baby, I suggest you back in the next few hours, Helena Baby. I don't think 650 will hold up come race day. Looks I, like the second favourite, doesn't it, Paul? Yeah. Helena Baby to me now, just for the indeed the early yeah. betting. And if Steve's right and he's the one for us does drift, I'd be very, very happy to take that around the double double okay. digits, ten or eleven dollars. Um, loves Tarapa, good fresh up record, strong strong trial. It was. It's a sticky one at this time of the year. You're getting horses that are presenting first up, and they might have all the heavy track form of the world. Mm. But are they fit enough? Yeah, yeah. Are yeah, they yeah. still fit enough? They can handle a heavy track, but are they going to handle it first up? Exactly, yeah. and it's a, it's a sticky one. It's almost tricky to assess. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. And well, the other thing, you, the other thing yeah. you need to do if you've got five minutes on your hands is go to the twentieth of July, twenty nineteen, and have a look at the replay of Helena Baby <laughs> winning the Alpenaki Cup. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good. That's a takeaway. I like that, Pops. So that's a bit of homework for the for the viewers out there. I think VP will be doing that bef just before kick off of the Dragons Warriors <laughs> match, just to get him uh, fired up, yeah, psyched up. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, team. One more race we want to have a look at, uh, and it's down at Trentham. Uh, we've had a bit of rain, Steve. That's what one thing we can say overnight. Much like the Waikato, probably a, I don't know, probably a fraction more at this point. But it's the James Bull, James Bull Holdings Rangitiki Gold Cup over the mile, race number eight. A fascinating race, purely because you've got a couple of stable mates here that have both been played in the first 36 hours. One of them being number 13 in Tav Attack, who opened original fave 450, now trading 360. Just ask me. Has to carry the 60 kegs, 9 into 5.50. And I'm sure when I left the office yesterday afternoon, Thaddeus, I'm mm. still around about that $8, $9 quote. So a lot of action early doors Friday around Just Ask Me. Uh, Z Falls, 6.50, or sorry, $6 into 5.50. So she has that second line with Just Ask Me. Sergio, 7 out to 7.50. Kick on, 8.50 out to 9. Aromatic, 9 out to 10. A very flash has been spec first up for Kevin Myers, 21 into 15. And Montfortau, best of the rest, at $16. So, Tab Attack, Just Ask Me, Alan Sharrett pair, both mm, well played. Very. And one in the middle market sits with number six and very flash, 21 firmed into 15. I think we've lost apostrophe out of this race, Steve. Would that be right? At least, yep. Bang on, yes, sorry. The yeah, apostrophe no. has come out. Yeah, <clears> okay. It was around that second line, yeah. maybe equal second line, yeah. with Z Falls uh, yesterday afternoon. Yeah, not to take away from the fact that there's plenty of money on Just Ask Me. VP, uh, as there tends to be with this individual, they do, he's got a cult following, as just ask me. Yeah, and when the rain has arrived is when the punters uh, <laughs> turn arrive. up in droves with just ask me. I mean, this is a bit of a headache race, isn't it? Because you've got uh, top and bottom of the book, both trained by Alan Sherrick and both taking money, uh, and, and both are very strong chances in the race. Let's quickly touch on the horse at the top of the book and just ask me. Look, his weak track credentials are, you know, second to none really in this race uh, with what he's been able to do. He, he's won an Opanaki Cup. He was a horse who won the Tauranga Stakes, of course, on a wet track in, in the summer, uh, but it was a wet track that he was the horse you wanted to be on because he was the, the best uh, horse with all the right track credentials in terms of the heavy nature, and, uh, and, and he blew them away. He's run second in a Winter Cup. He has got everything you want in terms of a good horse. The other thing he has, too, is he's had a couple of runs uh, on, on the board uh, in terms of recently in April and also in May. Now, 
he's been beaten, what, 11 and a half lengths and four lengths, and they have just been nice prep runs to get him ready for a race that he might be ready to strike in with heavy track conditions. Could that be the race? And when you're seeing the money move for him, um, I think you've got to t stand up and take notice. Then you go to the bottom of the book uh, in Tava Tech, and you'd have to be say, well, with what we've seen with him, this is very much right in his wheelhouse with a, a lightweight Lisa All Press aboard, soft track conditions, and a winner on this track. Uh, so, is it just a case of looking towards the Sharrock runners uh, as your one two combination? Well, you'd think so. I think other key runners in the race are Z Falls. Sergio with moving to that heavy track condition, but just an absolute runner, very hard to get past at the moment, uh, is, is Sergio. So, yeah, I, I find this race a bit of a headache with these two runners, uh, with Alan Sharrock, but I am more gravitating towards the top of the book, the 60 kilo, the one that's been there and done that, and, and that being, of course, Just Ask Me. Yeah, 100%. Well, you, I'm just guessing, I'd suggest you'd be a Just Ask Me fan, surely. You've been on the you would have been on the right end of a few just ask me plungers in the past. Yeah, but sixty kilos, given seven mm -hmm. seven kilos to the field, oh. and the stable mate as well. Exactly, but it, boy, with the money on, it just looks like an Alan Sharrick special again, doesn't it? I'm, I'm. You might be able to get up a fixed Quinella for us. Well, and have a look at the, what price we can get. I quite like the look of uh, Z Falls, to be fair. Okay. Very good. Uh, well, a couple of Group Three placings over. A 2,000 metres plus, last prep comes in off a game third behind Sergio and Providence provides at Awapuni. Um, never gives up. I think it'll cop the, cop the track as well. Mm. Would move pin on? Yes. That's where, uh, look, it does look like a fairly wide open race. Um, and with the money coming for the Alan Sh Sharrick stable mates, um, it just throws mm. another sort of ball in the air, I guess. So. But I do like Z Falls. Yeah, okay. So you're thinking we might get a little, get a little twist out potentially on Z Falls as well with the Sharrick money. In. Well, the thing is, with all the money on the Sharrick runners, Z Falls are still coming as well. Yeah, it's actually well backed. Steve, how did you line these two up? Because this is the pretty much the crux of the race to have attack and just ask me and how you sort of line them up from a betting perspective. Well, to have attack has always uh, been a well backed commodity in its last three to four starts and has rewarded punters winning two of its last three. On the minimums, that's where you normally look for on these heavy track conditions. Uh, Horses that sit on the minimum have a little bit of an upward spiral in terms of finding their ceiling. And Tavatak, I don't quite feel the horse has yet peaked um, in terms of rating. We might not find that till next preparation. Tavistocks, look, this is the first time it's really struck a heavy track, Tavatak. The progeny of Tavistocks predominantly don't like it heavy. They like to the fire out of the track, but when it gets into that heavy zone, it's normally a, a negative around the stock of Tavistock. So... Uh, always a concern there. It's out of an O'Reilly mare, so there's nothing really on the dam side to suggest it will swim to have attack, and it's going to be very wet come tomorrow afternoon. So that is a slight negative. Mm. Uh, when it comes to Just Ask Me, I think a key form reference around this individual, if you're a little bit nervous about the 60 kegs, because the 60 kegs on face value is like, oh, I'm not sure, on a heavy mm. deck, it might be just too much to carry. You go back to October in the Thompson Handicap at Trentham, this horse carried 60 kegs on a heavy deck and ran a gallant second behind Cheaper Than Divorce. Right. Now, Cheaper Than Divorce is a very good galloper, we know that. Yep. Uh, and she was carrying 53 kegs that day at Trentham, so a 7 kg swing around between Cheaper Than Divorce and Just Ask Me. Yep. And he ran a gallant second in the Thompson Handicap. I think that's, that's enough to suggest that the 60 shouldn't be that much of an alarm. Mm. And if you really like the horse, back it purely on its track conditions when it gets to a heavy form line. So mm. that's that... The, the, the other interesting runner, Thaddeus, is mm. Sergio. I wanted, to, to, I wanted to ask you about Sergio. Yeah. I think you've got to take a knock on it or a set against it. Number seven, Sergio, is as good as it's been, this preparation. And I, I'm keen to hear what BP thinks around this individual. But personally, I feel it's a horse that likes a dead track or a soft track, that pentrometer around four or five, mm. be able to jump, run, and run his opposition into the ground. You look at its last two or three wins, it's been able to get to the front and run really quick sectionals to the 600 and put horses off the bit early in proceedings mm. and say, catch me if you can, and still have the audacity to hold off the opposition the last furlong and hug that rail. Well, I doubt it's going to have that circumstance tomorrow where it's able to jump, run, produce those sectionals in the first half of the race and have that rail as a guide to the winning post. So it might be a horse that jumps 
put itself in the race and have to drag the rest of the field in the middle of the track at Trentham where they're all coming mm. wide at the back end of the day. And I just don't like that recipe around Sergio. What's your thought around number seven, VP? Because I, I know you've been fairly keen on the source of this preparation, but in terms of tomorrow, it's a completely different shape, isn't it? It is, it is for sure. It's a, it's a completely different race. Um, what I will say about him is he has just found a really nice niche of form, and it, it is on the better track conditions, and he is an incredibly tough horse. He, he is so hard to get past, isn't he? And that, that's going to play in his favour. Uh, he's got form on the board. He's been winning. You know, confidence is sky high with where, where things are sitting with him at the moment. Now, his wet track record's not there. He's gone forward in a couple of races and he's been beaten on both of them uh, on heavy tracks. But why not roll the dice and find out? Because he is in his peak form right now with how he's won his last two races. So, yes, I think all those things are, are immediate red flags uh, to put you off. But then you just think, Gee, he is a horse that's running. He is running for Chris Dell. He is a horse that just gets up on speed and he loves his work at the moment. But can he keep doing it uh, in those track conditions on the weekend is the big unknown. But, gee, you'd hate to not have him on a ticket for a quaddy or something like that and he's still in front kicking in the back markers, haven't quite run him down with just how hard he is to run past. So that, that's, the only thing I, I, that, that, that's the only thing in the back of my mind with Sergio. Um, I, I like Just Ask Me. I, I, I really like Sam O'Malley. In terms of a jockey as well, I mean, he's a very gifted rider. I mean, he's got, he's got a great mm. chance of winning the, the hurdle feature uh, with Chief Sequoia and then coming out and winning the Rangatiki Gold Cup. Now, that is not actually a feat that he that he hasn't done before. He's actually been able to win a feature jumps race with Chief Sequoia uh, in the Awapuni hurdle, and then he won with Deerfield uh, in the open handicap on the same day on the flat. Uh, so he might be able to have a big chance of of doing something similar again here. So, uh, talented rider, and uh, I'm liking Just Ask Me to get through those very tough conditions on the weekend. Oh, I love that stat. Great mm. stat. Great Wouldn't stat. be too many jocks have done that. Maybe mm. a Jay Riddell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter very Timms. Good. Peter mm. Timms, he was a good jockey. I, he used to ride Lord Zorito a lot and then get back on the flat. Uh, but yeah, JKB Riddell. Emily Farr, of course, is, uh, mm. you know, has, has been a, a very capable of doing both uh, also. So, yeah, very talented. Yep. But anything in this middle market before we just will push to Paul? The kick-ons, the aromatics, the champers, the very flashes. Do we do we need to mention them at this stage? Yeah, look, the very flash money is interesting, isn't it? Mm. Um, yeah, I find that one um, interesting because yeah. of just purely as, as wet track stats. We all know how good he is in wet tracks, and um, and we all know his breeding. Um, so yeah, fifteen dollars is where he sits at the moment. Might might have wanted to touch more. Um, yeah. I, I thought aromatic. Is, is the other runner. Look, ran well last time to the race, but this is just completely different track conditions. I mean, you have to double the track condition that was on last time uh, to what the horse faces uh, on the weekend. But uh, you sort of get the feeling that Aromatic is working towards something. Mark Walker and the team have found a race that they, they've identified uh, for her and, and have sent her down to the CD to have a shot at this race. So uh, mm. she sits at around that $10 mark uh, at present. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking towards the top of the market. And, yep. Where will he get to? He's now 550, mm. just ask me. Will this price keep moving? Yeah, well, it could well do. With the do we have uh, Alan Sherrick on the Pundas Lounge tomorrow morning? That's a good question. I'm not on the Pundas no. Lounge tomorrow, Stephen. So, so um, it could be purely I, down to that. Alan yeah. comes on the radio or possibly on trackside early doors tomorrow and has a slight yeah, lead. That yeah. may dictate where these prices finish up. Yeah, okay. Paul, would you, would you settle in? You obviously got respect for the Sherrick P here, but. I do, and I'm concerned about the action around them. <laughs> uh, but I, I do like Z Falls, so I'm sticking okay. with Z Falls on top. Um, I don't mind the look of Mont Ven too. Uh, um, I don't mind a bit of Rudy in, in, the, in, the, deep, in, in the deep stuff. Exactly. Um, <laughs> want, the, want the worst uh, fourth uh, when resuming, so. Maybe one for a uh, top three, top four. Yeah, okay. I thought he might be able to do the uh, do the double, the late double. Well, I can't remember he's got one in the last as well. I can't find it, of course, as I as I have from a page. I'm sure he's got one in the last as well, but I'll find it. Oh, there it is, Magdala, in the last as well. So maybe Rudy can go back to back. Might have been too Magdala. Okay, Paul Keen on Z Falls. Pops is going with Just Ask Me. We'll be waiting with bated breath to hear the words of Alan Sharrick tomorrow morning around those two runners and how they play out. Look, we've got two feature jumps races on the card as well at Trentham. It's obviously the Manawatu hurdles and Manawatu steeples. Hopefully those markets are around there. They are from the team. Thank you. Race number three is the uh, the hurdles, the Manawatu ITM Awapuni hurdles BP. And your maiden of the week uh, sitting atop here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Chief Sequoia uh, comes back to the hurdling caper. Uh, of course, a race he won 
last year, uh, not quite 12 months ago because this race meeting has been moved. Uh, it was in, around the middle of June when this race was held uh, 12 months ago. So um, yeah, this is a runner that's in great form. It was a devastating win, wasn't it, by him. He gets Sam O'Malley aboard again, gets three kilos off down to 64 and a half. English Gambler will set things up in front. We saw this horse winning at Tiataha in a jumping race. We won by eight lengths, but it was on a soft six. So just bear that in mind as he comes back to the heavy track conditions for a free runner. He does like the wet tracks, for sure, the heavy track conditions, and he looks to be a jumper for the future uh, in English Gamble. And then Arjun, of course, at the top of the book. Uh, look, a runner that's run in all our best races and has run third in the last two runnings uh, of the Great Northern Hurdles. But, uh, yeah, I'm keen to stick with Chief Sequoia. One word. We need the winner of the man or two hurdles. Two words, Chief Sequoia. <laughs> two words, we need two words. Of course we do, if we're having Chief Sequoia. Yeah. Uh, BP, the steeplechase is race number four on the card as well. Uh, and this is all competitive, but, well, I say competitive, a small but select field. Three very warm chances, but no tip. Uh, you know, does look the, uh, a deserved dollar eighty favourite, but Shamala Magic Row will make him work for it. Yeah, they, they will. I mean, no tip was good enough to run third in last year's Great Northern, uh, and he's a horse that is out of the right barn, of course, of Nelson and Madougal, and they've given him a flat run most recently. Uh, oh, certainly the eyes will be on Magic Wonder uh, with what this horse was able to do. He's a great Northern winner back from 20, and back in 2020. He's had a couple of runs to get himself ready. He'll have to carry the 70 kilos. It could be a real showdown between those top-class horses. And Shamal, look, you know what you get with Shamal. He's a, he's, a, he's a good jumper. He's competed in all our top steeplechase races for the last sort of three or four seasons. He's a rising 12-year-old now, uh, is Shamal. And look, in a small field, uh, he, he'll give his supporters a big chance. But yes, oh, I'm a bit torn here between no tip and magic wonder. I don't know which way to go, but yeah. I'll go no tip just in front of magic wonder. Will they use the inside figure eight? Is it or two steeple, Chase? I'm not sure. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, absolutely, hopefully, I'm sure. Uh, winner of the steeple, Chase, Paul? Magic wonder. Okay, I like the definitive answers that you got us. Righto, team. We better push on. Um, bonus back blitz promo, Paul. Tell me it's over. It's back. <laughs> it's back, yep. Yeah. Uh, this Saturday, uh, it's over four meetings. The first four races from Trentham, Tarapa, Doombin, and Morfittville. So 16 races okay. all together to get your teeth uh, yeah. stuck into. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, bonus back blitz. Big doubt, but Doombin. Oh, you touched on that. Indeed. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, very good. Right, uh, look, we're not going to have time for a viewer listener question, I don't think, this week. Gary Muller did have his. He sent us in what he was going to do with his $100 bonus bet. Behemoth top four. Behemoth top four on Saturday. Uh, in the big one, is it? Across the ditch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in the in the group one. BP, what race is Behemoth in? Is that the... No, it's not the Sankster, is it? The it Goodwood. Must Goodwood. South Australia, wouldn't it? Be the it Goodwood, is South Australia. Is it? The, is Goodwood, the Goodwood, quite right. Yeah, no, very good. Look, we're just going to last show next week. We're have a little break over the winter period, but uh, we want to have a big question before we leave from you. So if you do have a question for anyone on the panel, be in the chance to win a $100 bonus bet, tlufeedback at gmail.com. And congratulations to Gary and good luck with Behemoth. Get those questions in for the last show uh, next week before we have a little break and freshen things up, get Paul ready to go for another season. OK, best bets time, boys. Uh, we'll start with you, BP. Now, where did you go for your best bet this weekend? I went with uh, We Will Rock uh, in race number four at Tadapa on the weekend. Uh, things look nicely placed with how the horse ran last time to the races in the Cambridge Breeders. Track condition shouldn't be an issue. Yep, he has to carry the 58 and a half, but he's earned that with his, his couple of good runs, his preparation uh, in races like the El Manzor and the Cambridge Breeders. So I'll run with him. We Will Rock in race number four as the best. You deserve one, Pops. Can I say that? You deserve one. <laughs> hey, look, Tavir won a couple of weeks ago, so that's all good. Yeah. <laughs> good, good point. Good reminder. Uh, exactly right. Well, good luck with We Will Rock. Looks an absolute live chance uh, in that race at Tarapa race number four. Paul, uh, where'd you go? You're, a, you're on a streak here now. We, we need to keep this going. Uh, yeah, I've gone to race eight at uh, Trenton, the James Ball Holdings, Rangatike Gold Cup. Uh, and I'm sticking with Stephen Marsh and oh, Z Falls. Never gives up. And um, I, I think he'll cop the track. Uh, I love the fact Billy Pins on. Uh, I'm very, very happy. Okay. We well, might. Yep. Maybe we'll get a drift with all the action on the two yeah. uh, Alan Sherrick runners. You remember when Pops bet against um, Alan Sherrick last week? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <clears throat> Look, no, Marsh, you can do the business with Z Falls. What price are we at? 550, isn't it? 550 at the moment. Might, might get a little bit more with any luck. Okay. And Stephen, you last, your uh, bit of the weekend. In Sierra, is it? The, uh, the Marsh runner. In I think Sierra. It's yeah. In the yeah. middle day or middle part of the day at Tarapo, the race five, rating 65, 1300. 
really taken by this performance. This was its maiden win on a heavy track, so that's one key asset that's going to appreciate any rain that falls on the day at Tarapa. But you go back last start, comes out of that laneway flirting rating 65, 1200. It finished six that day. It got back from a wide gate. The race shape went totally against in Sierra. They went out to the 600, 5.5 lengths below pass, sprinting home one length above pass, suiting on speed runners. The source produced the best closing splits in the race. And I think there's a little bit more speed on the race on Saturday early doors, so just might play a little bit more fear in terms of it will get back again from a wide gate. Michael McNabb sticks aboard, up and trip, as I mentioned, wet track form, two starts back when winning by six lengths in the maiden yeah. race. So, so the figures have obviously been good around NCR as well. Yeah, maiden race uh, rated through the roof. Um, yeah. And just looking at the race shape last start, it was a very good run considering it was a well backed commodity that got beaten. I think the price will hold up $3.30 currently around in Sierra. But the likes of Rose Crescent, who has a similar race profile coming out of the same laneway flirting 65 sprint, Marcella, Wild West, they're all attracting early money. So I think the $3.30 will hold up for the majority of race day. Okay, $3.30. How yeah. did NCR not make BP's maiden of the week? <laughs> well, you can only pick one, can well, you? Well, true. You can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't. I'm actually trying to remember the weekend that it fell on. It was, I think it was a f Sunday. Yeah, I, I, you're right there. I'm not sure. Yeah. Good question. Good question. Surely, is, it, is that the viewer question? Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to be Paul Andre, but. No. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think the viewers want to know if you can tip out another NRL try score. You, you're pretty good at those, BP. Yes, at O'Carr. Yeah, how about that? Uh, with an incredible <laughs> record uh, out of Suncorp. Um, well, I haven't really got one this week um, off the top of my head. I, I, I'm a big Alex Johnson fan. I think Alex Johnson is almost uh, one of the biggest locks every week uh, when he lines up as he tries to chase down Nathan Merritt in terms of top try scorer for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. So maybe you could look that way uh, if you're looking towards a try scorer. Because um, I, I would say Kyle Felt, but they're up against the Melbourne Storm. Uh, so I'm, I'm mm. probably keen to keep away from him as well. What's the name of the league podcast? The Advantage Line. You have a BP on there? You could probably add, you probably raise the we have. combined IQ. <laughs> no, we, oh, it, it was the highest rating show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pops, thank you for your efforts as always this week. What are your uh, plans of uh, this weekend? Where are you going to be? And uh, I suppose are the Warriors going to beat the Dragons is the other question we need to ask you. Yeah, a couple, very important couple of weeks for the Warriors, isn't it? Because they do play the Newcastle Knights the following week as well. So there is four points. Look at them in the face if they're good enough. Uh, yeah, just uh, certainly just in the studio building into Tarapa's race meeting. And, of course, good luck to the Kiwis across mm -hmm. to Tasman, and especially Jim Pender with Gospodin, who looks to be a really good chance off the back what was a top run last time out. They're trying to get into the Stradbroke. Uh, that horse takes his place in the BRC Sprint. And a number of other Kiwis, of course, uh, with uh, the Chosen One in Coventina Bay uh, in the Doombin Cup looking to try and chase down Zaki. Yep, 100%. Yeah, yeah that's right. The Kiwi, plenty of Kiwis there. Plenty of Kiwis there in Brisbane. Thanks, BP, for your efforts, as always. Heaps of Kiwis to have a bet on it in Doombin, isn't there, Paul? Plenty. Yeah, OK. Yeah, good. just make sure you've got a wee bit of cash left. <laughs> well, we'll use the bonus back blitz. Boom. We're, we're in business, surely. Great scheme. <laughs> um, thanks, Steve. Because Spottom was very good, wasn't he? That, that run last that Yeah, last very night. good run, very yeah. good run. Um, I think he played around about 5-1 to one for a top three last start, so yeah, okay. handle any rain affected going. So, yep. Okay, Six boys, boxes. we better go. Uh, we're back for a last show next week. Yep. And you'll be here? No golf? I'll be here, yep. Happy birthday to uh, Supermodel. Going to her 50th on Saturday. Who's that? Don't worry about no, it. Yeah, Super this isn't a, this is a show for shout-outs. So, <laughs> thank you, boys. Unless and, it's family. Yeah, That's of course. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, boys. And thank you as well. Join us for the last The Leg Up on Friday in seven days' time. We'll see you then.